All right, in this video, we're gonna shoot the moon. We're gonna take a picture of the lunar surface. It's a little different from most observations you put into Skynet because the moon is big. It's about half a degree across, and that's a lot bigger than the field of view of most of our telescopes. So you're not gonna be able to shoot the whole moon at once. Rather, you're gonna have to pick a portion and observe just that one portion. This means there's gonna be an extra step. We're gonna pick a telescope or maybe multiple telescopes, but they'll all have about the same field of view. We'll pick a particular size field of view, a particular shape, and then we're going to position that field of view on the part of the moon we want to observe. We're gonna frame up that region we wanna take a picture of. And I'll give you some pointers as to what makes for a good lunar image and some pitfalls, things to avoid. And most of that has to do with the phase of the moon. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. And here we are on the main Skynet page. And this starts out like a regular observation, which we've done before. You go to my observatory and select optical observing. We're gonna add a new observation. And we're gonna to want to find the moon. Now we could go over to the sky viewer and poke around until we find it and click on it. Or we can use the target lookup. Now the sky viewer, we will come back and we're gonna use that to zoom into the moon and carefully position our field of view. But right now, let's just use the target lookup. I'll enter the word moon, search. Okay, it found it. Now remember, it loads an archival image of this part of the sky. This is a picture that was taken a long time ago. And the moon and the planets, they're always moving around the sky. So odds are it was not at this part of the sky when the archival image was taken. So it'll bring up a part of the sky, but the moon won't be in the picture and that's okay. Now, let's check some of our settings. We have the observation name, the default is moon. You can change that if you want. And in a prior video, we talked about how to set these three boxes. And for the lab course, I recommended minus 12, 20, and 0 0.5. You always wanna check those. And if you wanna refresh her as to why we chose those values, you can go back and check out that other video. Okay, advanced settings, we don't need those. And then you have the observability chart. And this shows you if the moon is up sometime over the next 24 hours at the various observatories you have access to. And indeed, these lines come up above the gray line so the moon is observable, so I can proceed. Now I should say, if it's a new moon, that means the moon is close to the sun in the sky and it's not observable. So if you're doing this, during a new moon, uh, it won't come up as observable. And for anything else in the sky, if it's not observable, I would say don't observe it. Because for anything else in the sky, it could take weeks or even months before it becomes observable. But the moon moves across the sky so quickly that if it's a new moon now, it's only gonna be a day or two before it's, it is observable. So the moon is the exception to the rule. Even if it's not observable right now, you can proceed and we can put the observation in. You may have to wait a day or two, but you'll, you'll get your image back. Okay, next we're gonna pick our filter. And the moon is bright. So we're gonna wanna pick a filter that blocks a lot of the light. Maybe a U filter, uh, which images towards the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. Ultraviolet light does not make it through the atmosphere very easily. The atmosphere blocks most of that. Or we could pick a narrow band filter. These uh, block all light except around a very small range of wavelengths, usually around emission lines of common elements. Anyway, we've, you know, you could hunt and peck through these lists and find these and select them, but we've tried to make it easier for you. We've grouped them all together under low through. So if you select low through, that corresponds to any of these low throughput filters. Now you may have noticed that when I click low through, some of the telescopes X'd out. And that just means that those telescopes don't have any of these low throughput filters. And that's okay because we still have many telescopes that have at least one of the low throughput filters. So let's save and continue. 
Okay, now we're going to pick our telescope. And there are many observatories, many telescopes that have at least one low throughput filter. That's what's being displayed here. And it's currently open to CTIO, Saratololo. That's our main prop site. And I encourage you to pick one of those telescopes. Uh, it's great imaging at that site, so you get a nice, crisp image of the moon. And I have access to all of them here. You may have access to a subset. The thing you want to look at is the field of view. Some telescopes, like Prompt 5, have a smaller field of view, 10 arc minutes by 10 arc minutes, so a square. And just for reference, the moon is half a degree across. That's 30 arc minutes. So this clearly is not going to cover the whole moon. It's going to be a lot smaller. We can position it to a particular spot on the moon. There are other ones here, like Prompt 8. It's 25 arc minutes by 25. So that'll cover almost the entire moon. It's all about what you want to do. Do you want to get an image of most of the moon, or do you want to zero in on a particular part? Now, you don't have to select a single telescope. You can select multiple telescopes. But I encourage you to select telescopes with pretty much the same field of view. Because next, we're going, we're going to take this field of view, and we're going to position it on the part of the moon we want to observe. And so we want kind of the same field of view. Now, for example, if I scroll down here, Here's Prompt Meckering. This is one of our Australia sites. It's a prompt telescope, so high quality. And it has a field of view of 10 by 10, 10.2 by 10.2, but close enough. I'm going to select that one too. So whichever is available first will carry out the observation. Save and continue. So now we're on the exposures page. But before we put this in, uh, we're going to go position our field of view. This is the part that's different from submitting a regular observation. So we're going to go back in the breadcrumbs to the target screen. And we're going to find the moon in the sky viewer and zoom in on it. Now, first thing you need to do is set the observatory. This is the sky viewed from Dark Sky Observatory in North Carolina. And that's not one of the telescopes we picked. Uh, we picked Prompt 5, Prompt 5 from Saratololo or prompt Meckering from Meckering. Uh, pick one of those observatories. I'm going to pick Saratololo. So this is the view of the sky from Saratololo. And I'm going to pick the Prompt 5 telescope. Now, I need to find the moon. And this is how I recommend you do it. Start by setting the time to now. You can do that by pressing this little clock button. OK, so right now the sun is up in Chile. And I'm going to advance time using the hour button here, one, one hour at a time, until the sun is set. So the sun just set. We can see the stars and planets and everything. And I'm going to keep going until the moon rises. There it is. It's already marked because we already selected it. I'm going to zoom into it. Keep zooming in. Now, if you watch this here, the moon is moving. It's moving from left to right. And that's because our planet's rotating. So from our point of view, the sky is passing overhead. And we've zoomed in enough that we can actually see this motion. And if we're not careful, the moon will move off the edge of the screen. So I recommend hitting the pause button. That will stop that motion, give you some time to plan. I'm going to frame it up one more time. OK. and the Pink box there, that's the field of view of our telescope. That's the field of view of Prompt 5, 10 arc minutes by 10 arc minutes, so much smaller than the moon. Now, if I were to pick a different telescope like Prompt 8, we said Prompt 8 had a field of view of 25 by 25, so that's much bigger, almost the entire moon. Anyway, I'm going to go back to Prompt 5. And then we need to position it. And you can position it just by clicking anywhere on the surface of the moon. Now, obviously, some parts are going to be better than others. You don't want to observe the dark side of the moon because you won't see anything. It's in shadow. And so you just get a blank image back. You're going to want to position it somewhere over here where the moon is illuminated. Now, the best place to observe is the terminator. That's the division between light and dark. On the terminator, or close to the terminator, the 
craters and mountains and ridges, they cast long shadows. That makes for a more exciting image. The, the lunar features look three-dimensional if they're casting long shadows. So you definitely want to get the Terminator in your image. So, you know, maybe you do something like that. But something else to consider, this is what the moon looks like right now. What if the prompt telescope, prompt five we selected, what if it's not available for a day or two? Maybe it's busy doing something else, or maybe the weather's bad. Well, during that time, the Terminator is going to keep moving to the left. The darkness grows from the right side to the left side. So by the time this is dispatched, more of it will be in darkness. So I recommend, instead of framing it right on the Terminator, frame it to the left. Make sure you have the Terminator so you get those awesome crater shadows, but frame it to the left just in case it's not dispatched right away because that Terminator can creep. Day after day, it's going to creep more and more to the left. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, a couple special cases. What if it's a new moon? If it's a new moon, the whole thing will be in darkness. Or if it's close to a new moon, the whole thing will be in darkness, except maybe for a tiny crescent. And as I already said, it won't be dispatched for a couple days. If it's a new moon, it's close to the sun in the sky, and Skynet won't let you observe while the sun is up or while the sky is bright. So it will hold the observation for a couple days until the moon is moving away from the sun. And at that point, you'll have illumination on the right-hand side. So if you're looking at a new moon, everything's dark, I recommend that you take your field of view and image over here on the right-hand side. Although it's in darkness right now, by the time it's dispatched, you'll have a crescent of light on the right-hand side. Now, the other special case is a full moon. If the whole thing is lit up or close to it, you can observe right away. You can observe any part of that full moon that you want. Just the thing to keep in mind is if the moon is full, it's being illuminated from above. So there are not long shadows, and you're not going to get a really great crater ridge mountain shadow picture. It's going to look flat. You'll still see all the features, but it'll be flat, very two-dimensional. Your best bet then is to image near the edge of the moon. You may get a little bit of definition near the edge of the moon. Or wait a couple days until the Terminator starts moving across the surface and then image then. Okay, I'm going to set this right there. And you have to go through the steps again. We're going to select the filters, but it's already selected, so really it's just about hitting these save and continue buttons. The telescopes are still selected, so save and continue. And now we're going to put in our exposure. Again, first thing, you have to pick a design telescope. Either pick the generic telescope or maybe prompt five. They're the same. I would go with the generic. Put in one exposure for a tenth of a second. So on prompt five, that will take a tenth of a second. Prompt Meckering, uh, it's a little bit longer, uh, just because Meckering has a little bit lower throughput, but about the same. And whichever of those telescopes is available first will carry out the image. I'm gonna go down, save and continue, and submit. Okay, it's in the system there. And let me just end by showing you an example of what this looks like when the observation comes back. So here's an observation. I did multiple moon shots with multiple different filters. They all came out looking pretty much the same. Let me just click on the JPEG for one of these. There it is. And it came back upside down. Sometimes the telescope pictures will do that. But you see the Terminator, the Terminator going through the middle there. And indeed, near the Terminator, the craters are really well defined. You can see here's the bright side of the crater and the dark side. It's casting long shadows, makes it look three-dimensional, gives you a really nice lunar image. Of course, if your image comes back completely dark, then um, probably you image the dark side of the moon or the observation was held so long, the Terminator moved into your field of view and fully across your field of view. So if it comes back bad for any reason, just resubmit.
Okay, happy lunar observing.